Stories have been a major part of my life for as long as I can remember. I love books, and I love stories. As I get older, however, I start to really analyze what it is I'm reading, and, looking back, I start to see some very obvious twistings of the messages aimed towards children. Take the Hardy Boys, for instance. Those books weren't even all written by the same guy. Franklin W. Dixon is the pseudonym for several writers from a book farm who were paid to produce Hardy Boys mysteries like so much canned corn. The books themselves were badly written and held some pretty flimsy life lessons. Here are some things I've learned from the Hardy Boys. 1. I learned never to trust anyone who seems different. Read, not white and or weird accent. Seriously, almost every bad guy is black, Russian, Asian, or European. Which, in and of itself, begs the question why the police have trouble finding the bad guys in this sleepy little town that is Bayport. 2. The police need my help even if, and when, they tell me to go home or they'll arrest me. Me, of course, being a 14-year-old boy genius and they being bureaucratic lazy pen pushers. 3. Getting caught by gun-toting criminals will result in my being held in a dark room or some such other place, but not killed until the timely arrival of my 14 and 15-year-old brother and friends because, again, we can't be bothered to call those lazy no-good police. The Hardy Boys is just one of many of the offenders in this genre. There are so many books that rely on the notion that the children are better suited for solving mysteries and crimes than the police or any other adult that it's a wonder that more kids aren't captured by criminals. But that's not the worst of it. My real problem with childhood stories is with the much more inaccurate and confusing fables. When I was growing up, fables were everywhere. I had books of fables, adults recounted fables from memory, and even Jesus, through the magic of the Bible, was telling me fables. A fable is a life lesson story, usually about anthropomorphized animals in bizarre and unlikely situations. At the end of the story, as an addendum, there is a moral, the life lesson we were supposed to learn. I suppose that's all well and good, if the moral was actually correct or made any sense. Here are some of my favorite fables, their morals, and what I actually learned from the story. The Tortoise and the Hare A rabbit and a tortoise have a foot race. The rabbit scoffs at the tortoise and brags it up. I'm so awesome, he says, or something like that. So after the forest creatures set up the event, probably with Mrs. Badger being a total pain in the tail, what with her, that table goes over here, why aren't the deviled eggs ready, why does this tent smell like old, and whatnot. Finally, the race is started and the rabbit takes off like lightning. The tortoise starts trudging down the course at what would seem to everyone else as a leisurely pace, but truthfully, is tortoise running as hard as he can. The rabbit, seeing how much in the lead he is, decides to take a nap a couple of meters from the finish line. Long story short, the tortoise wins while the rabbit sleeps. Moral? Slow and steady wins the race. I'm calling bullshit. Why would the rabbit take a nap? Are rabbits notoriously sleepy animals and someone failed to mention that to me? Also... Okay, there's no also. Just, why is he sleeping a couple meters from the finish line? Sleep on the other side of the freaking line. My morals. One. Don't take naps during a foot race. Two. Don't be an arrogant jerk. Three. If you're not very good at your desired profession, success will only come if you never sleep, so that your being crappy at it will be overshadowed by your dedication. At least until you burn out and start pegging people off from a courtyard clock tower. The Ant and the Grasshopper An ant and a grasshopper are friends and neighbors. All summer, the grasshopper plays and dances and has a great time living up the hot, glorious days of summer. He probably has a barbecue or two and sets up a golf tournament. You know, he's the fun guy who wants everyone to be happy and have fun. The ant decides to work hard all summer, preparing for the winter to come. The ant, from time to time, tells the grasshopper that he should be working too. And the grasshopper tells the ant that he should stop being a tight ass and have some fun while the summer is still here. Both continue with their own stubborn ways. The ant never takes a day off and the grasshopper never stops the vacation. 
Long story short, winter comes, the ant is warm and has plenty of food, while the grasshopper is left out in the cold with no food. Long story short, winter comes, the ant is warm and has plenty of food, while the grasshopper is left out in the cold with no food. The grasshopper knocks on the ant's door and asks to come in, whereby the ant says, Go away, you should have worked instead of having a good time. But I thought we were friends, says the grasshopper. We are, but you need to learn your lesson, says the ant, and then slams the door in his face. Moral? Idleness brings want. To work today is to eat tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Here's what I got out of this story. Tim's morals. 1. Get better friends. 2. If you work all the time and never have any fun, you'll probably turn into an asshole. 3. It doesn't matter if you're both wrong in your own extremes. Being a miserable workaholic will always be better than being a happy, fun-loving guy. These particular morals, although in no way matching to their stories, are at least good lessons and impart wise character traits for kids to embody. Then there is... The Scorpion and the Frog A scorpion needs to get to the other side of a river. He asks a frog for a ride to the other bank. The frog says, No way, scorpion, you'll sting me and I'll die. To which the scorpion replies, No, I won't. If I sting you, we'll both drown, and I'll never cross the river. Since this makes perfect sense, the frog accepts. Halfway across the river, the scorpion stings the frog. The frog says, Why'd you do that? Now we'll both die. To which the scorpion replies, Because I'm a scorpion, that's what I do. Moral? The leopard can't change his spots. Okay, obviously that's the moral of a different fable. One with a leopard in it, probably playing dice with some mice and a horse, but it's the same gist. I'm just pointing out that this idea is popular. Real moral? People never change. Yep, you read that right. Nobody ever changes. Ever. Forget redemption. Forget compassion for people in dire situations forced to do bad things because of their situation. Forgiveness? No f***ing way. No one will ever change, so don't trust them. Here are my morals. Some people are batshit insane. Be wary of them. Also, buy a boat. Conclusion? So from what I can tell from all these stories is this. If you work too hard, never sleep, and never trust anyone, you'll be an upstanding, awesome person that everyone will envy. But no one will like you, and you'll have no friends. And if that happens, who will rescue you from the Russians when you're captured while solving crimes? <laughs>